Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I wanna to show you how to install and run the new beta version of OpenDingux software. Now this is the operating system that runs on the RG350 devices as well as the new RG280 devices. So I'm gonna show you how to install this on a fresh new SD card. And then we're also going to run the update and then I'll show you how it works in terms of performance and then all the benefits that come with this new operating system and then some of the shortcomings that are happening just because it's in a beta status and it's not quite ready uh, for public use yet. But if you're interested in trying out the kind of latest and greatest when it comes to the operating system for your device, this is the way to do it. So without any further ado, let's check it out. Okay, so before we get started, just a few words of warning. Number one, make sure you use a separate SD card for this. That way, if anything happens, you can plug in your old SD card and you'll just be right back to where it was. Secondly, this is for intermediate users and advanced users, right? So if you are comfortable with things breaking and like, you know, crashing and stuff like that, then use this software, you know, try it out. Uh, but if you're not and you just want things to run the way they should run, this is not going to be the platform for you. And finally, you know, this is a beta, so expect bugs. And I can't cover every little nuance here, but I do have a written guide down below that shows some of the things that I noticed in terms of bugs when it came to trying out this software. So just keep all that in mind and you'll have a lot of fun. So let's get started and talk about the features. So this new firmware has a lot of neat features. Number one, it has a single OPK, which means one single file that you would use to update your firmware, which is really handy. So you don't have to sit there and track down the specific one for your specific device. Next, it uses an MTP protocol, which is a media transfer protocol, which means you can basically just plug your RG350 into your computer and it'll recognize all the SD cards. No need to FTP or anything else like that. Uh, this is going to show improved performance because it's running an updated kernel. It's using a Linux kernel 5.10 as opposed to 3.12 on the original device from 2013. And there are also some graphic improvements as well because it uses bicubic scaling, which just looks a little bit better than the typical bilinear scaling. It also has external gamepad support, so you can use X input gamepads like the Xbox 360 controller. And then it also allows for you to use mass storage devices like flash drives or low powered hard drives, which is really kind of neat too. So this firmware is not ready to go for public release yet, uh, but it does have some features that they're looking into. For example, uh, Bluetooth dongle support, and then also reintegrating HDMI support, uh, adding support for Wi-Fi uh, dongles, and then also including things that used to be on the original operating system. For example, sharpness controls and screenshot hotkeys, as well as a left analog stick mapping to your D-pad. So like I mentioned before, there are some bugs and issues with this operating system. It's not ready for public release. And probably the primary issue is the fact that several OPKs have not been recompiled for this new operating system yet. What that means is that there are going to be several games and emulators that are just not going to work yet. Uh, for example, there are no arcade emulators that really work at this point, uh, but I expect that to be changed in the future. And then that media transfer protocol that I'd mentioned before, it's kind of temperamental. When you plug it into your computer, it'll work for like a few minutes, you know, and then at some point Point, it'll just kind of kill itself and you have to unplug and replug in. So it's just kind of one of those bugs that are there. And lastly, I couldn't find any front ends that actually work with this. So if you're used to using simple menu or 350 Taric or emulation station for your RG350 device, this is not going to work for you at this point. But again, this will probably come in time. It just takes time for people to recompile and get everything ready for the new firmware. Uh, and really what I want to show with this video itself is all the potential and promise that comes with this new beta software and the ability for you to try it out yourself so you can make your own judgment. So let's uh, let's get started installing. So like always, I have a written guide down at the bottom of this page here. So just go ahead and click on the link down below the video and you'll be able to go to my written guide and it'll show you everything you need to do. First things first, we want to install a brand new firmware onto your new SD card. So go ahead and click on the link for the appropriate firmware that you're going to be using for your device. I'm starting with a 350M just for this example here, but just go ahead and download that file and then unzip it and then move it over to some folder on your desktop. It really doesn't matter what it is. At that point, you can delete the zip file after you've unzipped it. And then you're gonna use an app called Win32 Disk Imager. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know exactly how this is gonna go. But basically, you're gonna pick that image file within the software itself, and then make sure you're using the right drive letter for your SD card. And then you just hit the right button, and it'll flash that data onto your new SD card. Thank you. 
Okay, at this point we have a brand new RG350M software image for our SD card. The next thing we have to do is make sure the Linux partition takes up the entire page. So we're going to use an app called Disk Genius here. Just open it up and you can see here it has a bunch of space that has not been allocated yet. So all you have to do is right click on this and then go resize partition and then just move the ext4 partition all the way across so that it takes up the entire uh, SD card. This is an important step because it allows you to use all of your storage space that's available on your SD card. So after you're done extending that partition, the next thing to do is actually just eject that SD card. And this is going to be your internal SD card, your TF1 card. So this is going to hold your software on it. But also we're going to need your external SD card, your TF2 card, because that's what we're going to put the software image for the new beta open Linux firmware. So let's do that now. So you just scroll down a little bit more and it'll say, hey, download the latest beta firmware. So just click on that and it'll come up with this page here and just pick the GCW0 update and just save that OPK. Once you have that saved, all you have to do is just drag that over to your external SD card in a folder that's named apps. At that point, you can also eject this card and we're ready to do it. So I have my two SD cards here. Here's my 16 gig SD card that I'm using for the software. So that has the clean install of the RG350 firmware on it. And then you can see here, I have a 128 gig card, which is my storage card or my TF2 card. And I'm gonna just plug both of these into my device. Here's my old card here, so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to move it somewhere safe so that way if anything happens I can use that card again. And then here we are, I'm putting in the SD card for the internal beta and then the external storage. And then boot it up and it's just going to boot up like a brand new RG350M. Okay, so here we are with a brand new install of the RG350M stock firmware. And you can see here, I can tab through and see what's available here. Uh, there's not gonna be any emulators on this, uh, but you will see that, for example, under the games, it has a bunch of preloaded games that came with the device. But for now, uh, go to the applications tab and you'll find the app that says OS update. And that is the beta firmware update. So just follow the prompts in here that'll tell you to update. And it'll take a minute, but just kind of set it down, let it do its work. And there'll be moments where it kind of gets hung up and you think, oh, something's going wrong. It's not, it just takes a while. And then once it's update complete, it'll show this is done. And then you can actually look and see that if you have any issues with this beta firmware, you can actually hold down the X and Y buttons when you restart, and that'll actually go back to the original stock firmware. So just something to keep in mind. And again, same thing, this is gonna take a minute to load, but once it's done loading, you're gonna be up and ready to go. Now I wanted to show the RG350M in particular because it has one special feature in the fact that it shows all of your icons in a much smaller resolution because it's taking advantage of the higher resolution in RG350M. So if you like having lots of icons on one screen, this is going to be a great example for you to use. The only issues here is that this firmware in particular, at least at this point, uh, does not have any additional skins that you can add. And when I try to use the wallpaper app to change the different wallpapers, it actually crashes back into OpenDinux. So there are some issues with the firmware, but like I said earlier, expect bugs. So one of the best features of this new OpenDinux firmware is the fact that you can plug in a USB cable into your PC and then access everything right then and there. You just have to go into the USB mode application here and then change it to mass storage and that'll enable the MTP protocol. So all you do at this point is just plug in your USB-C cable into your PC and then let me switch over the PC to show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's me plugging it in right now. And there it goes, it pops up, you get your apps, home, and media folders. So you can go in here, you can add in new apps, you can even add in new games. All that stuff is done right then and there on the USB cable with your device turned on. So it's really perfect. But like I mentioned earlier, it is kind of temperamental, so there are some issues where it'll disconnect here and there. Uh, so just kind of bear with it and then unplug and plug it back in, but it seems to work pretty well. So you can see here, if you click into your media folder and then you pick on your SD card, you can actually pull up your entire SD card contents. So you could delete games, you could add games, everything else right then and there without having to take any cards out of your device ever again, which is pretty cool.
And then here you can see in the apps folder, you have all of the apps available. Now I mentioned earlier, there were a bunch of apps on there that, uh, that were pre-installed. So I'm gonna take most of those off. So I'm just gonna unclick a few of them, but click the rest of them. And then I'm just gonna delete all the ones that I don't want. There you go. How easy was that? Okay, so now let's start adding in the OPKs that actually are optimized or compatible with this new firmware. So if you scroll down further in the same guide that I have linked below, you'll see that I have listed out all of the apps that I've already tested myself that are either optimized for the actual new firmware or they're at least compatible with it. So all you have to do is just right click and then save as and then save your OPK wherever you want it to be and then drag it into that apps folder on your device. And that's really it. And I'll try to keep this updated as much as I can uh, when it comes to the future. But for the most part, this is really everything that works so far. Now, one point I want to make for the Super Mario 64 port, uh, make sure you read the entire guide. It's not as simple as just grabbing a file and moving it over. You actually have to go and recompile it yourself. But it's pretty easy and I'll walk you through it and I have a video for it and everything. Okay, so let's move over these new uh, OPKs so that way we have these new emulators installed on our device. And let's switch back over to the device and see how it looks. Okay, so here we are with our emulators tab. So here there's just a few of them that are working so far. And you can open up these emulators just like you do on the old firmware. One thing to keep in mind is that because of this smaller kind of font and icons that are available on the RG350M, you can see a million of these games at once, which is kind of handy if you're okay with that. But if you got bad eyesight, uh, this may not be a solution for you. And you're going to want to go in and reconfigure all your emulation settings. For example, you want to go in and change your graphics settings so that it works perfectly for your device. And then also if you need to load BIOS files, for example, for PlayStation 1 or Game Boy Advance, you're going to want to do those as well. And I have all the instructions for that in the written guide below. But just bear in mind that you're going to have to spend a couple minutes, you know, making everything look the way you want it to look, uh, which I kind of find fun. You know, I really like tweaking all these settings. So uh, just go ahead and go into those settings and make those little adjustments there. And right now, most of these emulators just have the same performance that they did on the old firmware, but I expect in the future there's going to be new optimizations that are going to take advantage of this new hardware kernel, uh, which has been updated since, you know, the old one from 2013. So here we are with PlayStation 1. I can confirm here that, you know, the rumble feature does work on this device. Uh, it works on this firmware, which is really great. Uh, and everything looks nice and sharp, and it just looks the way it did. And luckily, some of the best emulators, some of my favorite emulators on the stock firmware also work on this new beta firmware. So that's a really promising sign in the fact that you don't have to make a lot of compromises when it comes to some of these original emulators. For example, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, PlayStation, all of those are going to play really well. And I expect they're going to play even better in the future as they make some of those optimizations. And I've mentioned it before, but you know, you can play the Super Mario 64 port on this new firmware. It's actually the only way you can play it is through this beta open Dingux firmware. And it just runs beautifully. It's so fun to play this game. And it's just kind of amazing because it almost feels like it shouldn't be able to play on this game. And then you start it up and it plays so well. And you're like, holy crap, how is it that it not only plays, but it plays so beautifully. And so uh, for one of those things, if you're really into Super Mario 64, uh, you're really gonna love this firmware because it allows you to play this game beautifully. And because it's a native port, it's not an emulated game. So in that sense, you're playing it just like you're playing it on the Nintendo 64, as opposed to when you try to play it on some of the other devices where you have stuttering and issues and stuff like that, you're not going to find it on this version of Super Mario 64, which is just super awesome. Okay, so let's move away from the 350M and let's talk about some of the other devices. So for example, here I have it installed on the 350P and it's the same process, everything works the same, but you can see here it doesn't have those tiny icons because it's using the typical 320 by 240 display. But everything works just fine on it and certain ports even will still work. For example, you can use Otomex to boot up Doom and so you can play Doom on this device just fine. And just recently they added support for the 280V as well. And this is, you know, a really fun device to play with, uh, but it is pretty awesome to have this new firmware on this device as well. And it's gonna be the same process to boot up games as it was in the former firmware, uh, but you will need to go in and change your graphic settings and stuff like that.
But in addition to that Super Mario 64 port, there is another emulator that only works on this new OpenDingo firmware, which is a Virtual Boy emulator, which is really exciting. And so you can see me here playing Mario Tennis on the Virtual Boy on RG280V, which is just kind of crazy to have this available to you. And I have to say, this game is like super hard because you have to kind of figure out your depth perception as you're playing the game. But I think over time you kind of figure it out. And this emulator is not perfect. It ha does have some hiccups and slowdowns, but overall it actually runs really well. So if you have an RG350 device and you would really like to play Virtual Boy, this is going to be a solution for you. Now, like I mentioned before, some emulators work really well. For example, this is my favorite Game Boy Advance emulator here, and it's working just great. And I'll have links to all this down below in my guide. And Super Nintendo works just fine. You're not going to see any performance gains right out of the box here, uh, but I hope that over time we're going to see more uh, optimizations and these games are going to play even better in this new firmware as time marches on. And in addition to the Doom port, you can also play like, for example, the Streets of Rage remake, which you see here, and it works just fine. As well as the Open Tyrion uh, port, this one works fine as well. And finally, I also got Wolfenstein 3D to work okay. This is probably not an ideal game to play on the 280V because you don't have any analog sticks, but I just wanted to demonstrate that it is up and running. All right, that's really it for this video. I just wanted to show you how to get this installed and give you a couple precautions along the way in terms of making sure you understand what you're getting into if you try to install this beta firmware. But if you are on the experimental side of things, you don't mind tinkering around with your device and seeing what it's capable of doing, this is gonna be a fun solution, especially if you have an additional SD card that you can mess around with. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.